In the age of a selfie with social media and Instagram, if we don't have photos all over the internet, are we relevant? Do we exist? Until recently, I felt that my face couldn't be seen in photographs, and I went out of my way to avoid having pictures taken. I was born with a birth defect, and these are some of the words that were used, craniofacial anomaly, a cleft lip and palate. I was told I had a space on my face. I've had over 30 surgeries. And most recently, four years ago, I had three additional surgeries. It's a part of who I am, and it's probably something I'm going to have to deal with for the rest of my life. But it shaped how I see myself. And as you can imagine, those words applied to your face and 30 reconstructive surgeries will take its toll on how you see yourself. So we're shaped by these words and the language, and we're shaped by family stories, and we all have them. And my mother used to share a story about when I was born, and my parents really wanted me. We had moved to Ohio when my mother was pregnant, and my parents didn't have much of a support system. So the, the plan was that my grandmother would come from New York to Ohio to help. But I was born early. So when I was born, my mother gave birth, and in the operating room, they told her there was a problem, that I had this anomaly, and then I had this birth defect. So my mother decided that no one should see me until I had my first surgery, which would be at about two weeks. So she told my grandmother not to come. But when I was eight days old, this is how the story goes, I don't remember. <laughs> my grandmother came into Ohio, and she showed up, and she, my mother let her hold me. And my grandmother was just beaming and said to my mother, this is the most beautiful baby I've ever seen. She's perfect. And my mother would share the story because she found such comfort in those words and, and the strength of her mother. I, like I said, I've heard this story a lot. And I think that through the years, what I started to hear was that reminder that when I was born, my face shouldn't be seen by anybody. So I mentioned I've had a lot of surgeries, and uh, my child, and most of the surgeries were over the summer. I remember when I was four, I, had, I was living in Boston, and I had an operation, and at that time, you would go to the hospital the night before, and I shared a room with a small baby who was burned. And my father was with me, and that baby was just in so much pain. And I was terrified, and I was scared for myself. And I was sorry to be near this baby. And I remember feeling, I can feel it right now, so terrified. And I remember them giving me some medication. And it took the fear away. I was four. When I was 10, we moved to Florida. And one of the reasons we came here was because there was a physician here who was world-renowned in birth defects and children with clefts and craniofacial anomalies. He worked on all kinds of children. And I went to go see him, and it was a consultation. And he asked my mother to wait in the lobby, and he sat with me. And he talked to me, and when he was done, he leaned over into a recorder, and he held it up to his mouth, and he said, female patient, 10 years old, would be pretty if not born with a cleft. <laughs> and that resonated with me because he was a doctor, and not only was he a doctor, he was the best doctor, and one of the reasons we moved to Florida. So... Up and through high school, my summers were, I would say every other year I had surgeries and that was how I would spend my summers. And I would think at the beginning of every summer that I'd have an operation. I pray that I would go back to school and be pretty. I remember one summer I had surgery. I had two and they wired my mouth shut. And then at the end of the summer, they unwired it. And I went back to school and they never felt really pretty. But I functioned. 
and I accomplished. And I graduated high school. I went to college. I got a few degrees. I got married. I got, I had children. They're awesome. Thank God. And I, I got divorced. And I have this amazing career. And I have to tell you, when I speak for my job, I'm like a rock star. Right now, I don't feel that way. But I'm glad I'm here because it has to change. So got married, I got divorced, I had kids. <laughs> My kids are older now. And I went to go visit them last year. And I went to my daughter's apartment, and she goes to college in Boston, and I was looking in her room, and she has this massive wall of selfies, and there are probably 100 pictures up there of memories and special moments and people she loves and places she's been. And I was looking at them, and, and there wasn't a picture of me. And then I went to see my son's new apartment. He had just moved on his own. And in his room, he had not a hundred selfies, his were more thoughtfully curated, meaningful photos of places he'd been and things he'd done and people he loved. And again, there was no picture of me. But I know I'm relevant in their life. I had deprived them the opportunity to have pictures of me with really cool things we've done on their happy walls and desks. And I needed to change because I had stopped allowing anyone to take pictures of me. So I didn't really understand why I didn't like having pictures taken. I hadn't put active work into unveiling it. But I realized that one of the reasons in the past I had numbed myself was because I had these terrible thoughts about how I perceived myself and the names I would call myself. And I realized that, you know, when you grow up with constant reconstruction surgery, and you grow up being told you have an anomaly, and that you were born with a cleft, which is an opening, an imperfection, that's how my brain developed. I saw that. And I want to change. I started to think that I believe in God, and I don't really believe that God makes things defective. And that was a good starting point for me, but I know that God makes us different, and I'm okay with differences. I like differences. <laughs> I don't want to look like everybody else. So I can think of myself as being born different, and I'm totally comfortable with that. In December, it was my birthday, and we're going to show you in a second. My kids, I told them I was ready for a picture. <laughs> and and they, they made that for me for my birthday. And the truth is, I have yet to hang it up. But I'm really happy to share it with you today because it gives me hope. We do amazing things together. And I have people that I love and memories I want to keep. And it's time to do that. So, what do I want to leave you with? Please be aware of the language you use. Nobody ever intended to raise a baby in the world and say you're defective, or that you have an anomaly, or that you're going to need more reconstruction surgery once we do one procedure. We need to be aware of the language you use, because those words hurt, and sometimes in your head, you want to quiet them, and in turn, you hurt yourself worse. And that was what I did. So please, be aware. Let's celebrate differences. Because I am believing that if we identify the differences and celebrate them, that the beauty is soon going to follow. Thank you. Thank you.